Hey, young people. Well, earning the hate, as usual. Lawsuit, excessive force for Loveland police who arrest a woman with dementia, a 73-year-old woman. So I've tried to find just the body cam footage, and I'm sure there'll be 20 people putting the links to it, but I've searched for the last hour, and I'm just tired of freaking searching. All I get is bullshit news reports, you know, from YouTube pushing all the news agencies, and all they do is cut and paste the actual footage. So from what I'm seeing, there's some problem, but I would like to see the complete uncut body cam footage of how the contact went. Of course, all the media outlets are only showing the parts that push their agenda, uh, which is hate the police. And believe me, I'm no fan of the cops. I think they're out of freaking control and they need to be more accountable. But I would like to be fair and see the complete footage, and I can't find it anywhere. Nobody has just the body cam footage. It's all been cut up by the, it's like the press got it first, and they get to cut and pick and paste. So you're going to see cut and pasted parts. I'm not pasting or cutting. I'm showing what the media is showing because I can't find the full footage. All right, here we go. Warning. Attorneys say this video shows 73-year-old Karen Barner being stopped by Walmart employees after she wandered out of the store without paying for soda and detergent. Employees have been... Okay, so let's put this in perspective because when cops use force, it depends on the age, the risk, the weapons, the charge, the environment. Is it at night? Do I have backup? All these things can go into whether or not force was justified. This woman is 73. She looks pretty damn skinny. Comes out, she weighs 80 pounds. I don't expect the cops to know exactly how much she weighs, but how much of a threat do you think an 80 pound person is? I mean, I, I know, shit, 11 year olds that weigh 80 pounds. So this woman obviously doesn't look like a threat to me. These two guys get her to go back in there. Of course, she's willing to pay for the items she walked out with. And most store detectives, once you leave the store, they charge you with shoplifting. Of course, Walmart has come out in another article when I was looking for the footage and said, we've told our employees we don't press charges for first offense under $25. They don't pursue shoplifting charges. So they don't know why they called the police on this. But anyway, so they get her back in the store eventually escort her back inside. According to a federal civil rights lawsuit, Ms. Garner tried to pay for the item. All shoplifters want to pay once they get caught. But employees wouldn't let her. Police had already been called, and that's when Ms. Garner decides to walk home. Okay, so they call the police, and she left, and they let her leave. So this is a shoplifting call for under 25 bucks. I think it was soda and one other thing. So we're not talking about the crime in a century here. Now, to me, I don't know anything about this department, this Loveland Police Department in Colorado, but it seems like they got a bunch of inexperienced young punk cops that don't get any activity if they're going to get this excited over arresting a 73-year-old woman. Home. She was just two blocks from her home when she was stopped. All right, let's stop, ma'am. But attorney Sarah Schelke says her client's disabilities... So another thing that's going to be important is what did the people at Walmart tell the dispatcher when they called? Did the cops, sometimes the cops, if they're en route, they show up. So let's say Walmart calls and says, hey, I got a shoplifter here. I need somebody to come by and cite them or take them to jail. And normally they just give them a ticket, a promise to appear or go to jail uh, or go to court. So if the cops en route, when the cops get there, they may talk to the store detective and go, hey, what happened? Oh, man, she was in here, blah, blah, blah. That's the body cam that I want to see. What were they told? What did they know when they went after this woman? Did they say she's an old woman? She appears to be out of it. She seems like she's out of her mind. Seems a little crazy. Didn't know what we were talking about. Just kept saying she wanted to go home. All that is very critical in this officer's mindset for his actions. His actions are inappropriate no matter what he knew because he's kind of a punk. And you're going to see that later when him and a girl start laughing and fist bumping and, and making jokes about dislocating a 73-year-old woman's arm. But she did commit a crime, and she is walking away. So lawfully and legally, they have a right to detain her and take her into custody. Now, we get into the reasonable use of force. ...weren't considered during the arrest that followed. Ms. Garner was suffering from dementia. She was suffering from sensory aphasia. Well, 
to me, that doesn't matter. That's like saying George Floyd was suffering from uh, drug use, and the officer should have known that. George Floyd had a 80% or 75, 90% blockage in his heart, and they should have known about it. They don't. They shouldn't have known about that. That doesn't matter. They should know if the reasonable person would figure out that this woman, for one, is no threat. She's elderly, and she's not. She's not a big. She's not a crime of the century. It's not like she killed somebody. It's not like she's a danger to the public. She freaking shoplifted. Hell, in Dallas, you can shoplift up to a thousand dollars, and they won't even prosecute you. The DA says we ain't prosecute for under thousand. It's like open season in Dallas to go shoplift. Because as long as you stay under a $1,000 limit, you're good to go. DA said he ain't prosecuting. Black DA, by the way, but that doesn't matter. This, um, they both affect her ability to really understand what's going on in the world around her. Okay, to me right here, any reasonable cop would figure out this woman is kind of out of it. Now, can criminals act like they got problems? Of course. Do cops get desensitized when we deal with people and they're all lying and they always got excuses and they're always faking some bullshit on why they're doing it? Yeah, they do. But, I mean, come on, this woman's 80 pounds. I mean, I don't know how tall she is. She's a little frail woman. I mean, what what does that say about, you know, uh, this is going on the earning the hate playlist. And I always got cops here coming here about, man, that could be, you're making it worse. You're going to get cops killed because you're point out that and it's not just it's not all of us it's just you know that's just bullshit it is it's a it's a there is a sense a a, a, a long-term uh systematic uh whatever you want to use to say that our law enforcement has lost their way they have become desensitized to humanity they have power they can do what they want without accountability, and they know it, and they abuse that power daily. I mean, it's just, they have become the enemy of the people. And shit like this is just piling up and piling up, and then when cops get shot, people are like, oh man, they were heroes. Not bullshit. If you cops aren't changing your own environment, if you aren't calling out, I mean, look, this cops, these cops, it would have been very easy for a senior guy to come up and go, dude. You guys need to freaking learn something. That's a seven, eight-year-old woman. Would you want somebody treating your mother that way? What the hell is wrong with you? Why did you Why did you twist your arm the way you did? Why? I mean, it takes somebody to stand up. But unfortunately, all the cops are running around thinking, we're all heroes. We got to stick together, man. It's us against them. It's a war. The people are at war with us. We're at war with the people. Uh, it, you know, we got guns and badges, and, and it's the blue line. This is why, sooner or later... See, cops forget that our laws are based on voluntary compliance. As soon as the citizens stop agreeing to voluntarily comply, you are freaking in trouble and you mean nothing. Your badge, your power means nothing, especially in a society that's armed. Your power means absolutely nothing once people decide not to voluntarily comply. And you keep pushing... And it's already happened. Look at look at the riots. What happens? When a community of people or a group of peaceful protesters decide not to voluntarily comply, what does the government do? They pull out. They back out. They say it's too dangerous. They say they don't have the resources. And they let the people do what they want. People can push back if they want. And so far, you cops have been getting a pass by way too many people. Video is insane to watch. Two minutes into the body camera video, the lawsuit says Officer Austin Hopp grabs Miss Garner's left arm and takes her to the ground. I'm going home. Now, y'all know I've, heard, I've said it a thousand times that no person belongs on the ground. I taught when people say no and resist, you take them to the ground. That's the best way to do it, get them on the ground. This person is not what I consider like a no person. This person is a confused, old, weak, non-threatening person that is saying no, that tried to walk away, and technically by the letter of the law, maybe she did resist arrest when he said you can't leave and she walked away. And unfortunately, the sergeant tells him this is fine. The little female quota hire with the cute ponytail thinks it's funny. And then this is what happens.
and they dislocate this woman's arm and, and break her, her upper arm here, break the bone here and dislocate her shoulder. 80 year old. And they laugh about it and fist bump thinking it's cool because I mean, that, I guess that's what happens when you, when, when you think you're, when you're told throughout your life that all cops are heroes. And when you put your badge on, you write people tickets all day. You think somehow that you're a, a tough, unaccountable, tough person. It makes you very worried about vulnerable people in, in the community with a police force like that. Okay, I'm not sure. On another video, she had... It makes you very worried about vulnerable There was a different animal here. I don't know if she's changed this animal. I'm pretty sure I saw a, a, a different animal on another interview. I think she's changing this animal. But anyway, I digress people in in the community with a police force like that. Garner is eventually handcuffed and taken to a patrol car. By that time, Officer Dadia Jalali has arrived on scene. Okay, here's Miss Ponytail with her cute little earrings. Probably never done anything. Later, you're going to hear them talking and laughing and fifth slumping. And she's worried about her feelings. She got pushed out of the way. She felt she didn't feel like they let her do her job. And this happens all the time. You hire these women, uh, because you want to be PC and they're always concerned about making them feel good. So this cop ends up apologizing to her, telling her he's really sorry and he didn't mean to discount or push her out of the way or make her feel bad. But he has absolutely zero empathy for this woman who's 80 pounds and 73 years old. But he's concerned about his little partner in blue's feelings. You'll see it here in a minute. Grits, get in the car. In you go. Do not hook onto him. And a citizen who's been watching the interaction approaches the officers. To protect and serve. It should say, per the Supreme Court, we are no longer required to protect or serve. But that doesn't, they don't want to get that out. So we'll just keep putting this stupid shit on here that all these idiots run around saying, support your police. They're our friends. They're all heroes. Yeah, okay. So this is something that's not really coming out. This citizen who was driving down a road was so offended by how these two officers were treating this woman, he even calls the woman a child because she's so small and the way they were throwing her around. You have to use that much aggression. Yeah, give me your car so I can put a report. Good for you, dude. I wish you'd have a mask on so I knew you were. I hope this guy's a hero. Uh, he'll be testified. He'll be he'll be called into court if these people are charged. But good for him. Okay. I see you say so there how you throw that little kid. This is, this is how you throw that little kid. He thinks it's a little kid. To put a report. Okay. I see you say so there how you throw that little kid. This, is, this isn't just some random act of aggression. Their supervising sergeant Philip. Okay, so here's the here's a systemic problem that we keep hearing about. It's not a color thing. This woman's white, in case anybody wondered. It probably won't make the news. but So, this is the problem. Government power and unaccountability. Government mindset. Us against them. We are the blue line. We stick together. When in doubt, we just say we're following the law and we don't give a shit. And this cop sergeant enforces it. He doesn't care about the woman. He doesn't care about her age. He doesn't care that she's injured with a dislocated arm. He hasn't talked to her to evaluate her. He comes up and immediately reinforces the cops that they did a good job without any facts. Metzler showed up and Metzler made the comment, what, when you told her to stop, she she uh, kept walking, right? So we got her on obstruction. We got her on resisting. She's take her to the jail. And if they don't want to prosecute her, I don't care. Before That is a big problem. Cops are saying you may beat the charge, but you won't beat the ride. We get to harass you, we get to search you, we get to throw you around, we get to throw you in cuffs, throw you in our car, use force against you, and we don't care if the DA prosecutes. Guess what? We got our, we feel better because we got our payback. We got to do what we wanted. We don't care if the DA doesn't charge you. That is a big freaking problem, and that should be addressed. Cops who arrest people that are not charged and the DA drops, that should go in their permanent record because there are cops out there that probably arrest 75% of their people, if not 90, and the charges are always dropped. And you know why? Sometimes it's a bullshit arrest. Sometimes the DA just doesn't want to prosecute it. Sometimes the cops are so unreliable and so shitty and do such bad work 
that the DA will never put them on a stand. So they dismiss all their cases, no matter what it is, because they know the cop's a piece of shit. But see, that's a deep secret that a lot of people don't know, and those stats aren't kept or tracked. And that's a big problem. Cops need to be held accountable when they're arresting people and they don't get charged. That shows they either don't know the law, they're not doing good work, they're arresting people that don't need to be arrested. That's a problem. Again, it always comes back to accountability and power. Poor Mrs. Garner is transported to jail. The officers talk more about the ordeal. A little bloody and little muddy, that's how it works. Oh, look how great she is. See how big and tough I am? I'm bloody and muddy, man. I'm tough. See, I got my stripes, my ponytail. I, I'm, I'm really tough. In a minute, you'll see her crying and saying, you guys got to push me away. And I just didn't want you to think I wasn't trying because what you guys think of me is really important. Even though it may not be true, I just want to be reaffirmed. And you have to tell me because I have rice paper feelings because I'm tough and I have a badge. Uh, is the blood on her? Yeah. yeah, that's her blood. Mrs. Garner was transported to the department and court documents allege she spent several hours crying in pain. That's okay. We got you. The suit says she was later taken to the Larimer County Jail in Fort Collins while injured. That's some serious bruising. Let me tell you, this is probably a day or so after the incident, but that's some serious bruising. Now, obviously, she's 73. She may bruise easier, but still, I mean, look at this woman's arm, dislocated and broken. Now, was she resisting? Yes, yeah, she didn't want to go. Was she resisting because she was a threat and it was a violent crime and they needed to use violence against her? Come on, people. Good grief. Take her freaking, I'd have no problem if they take her wallet or ID, identify her, and say, you know what? And here's something that people don't realize. Cops can refer shit to the DA's office without you in custody. They could have went as long as, as long as you got her ID, I'll just write it up and give it to the DA. If they want to charge her, they can. Then what happens is the DA gets to the side and then there's no harm, no foul. But see, the cops don't get to get their payback because you called and bothered them from their donut eating experience for the day. And now you've, you've inconvenienced them. So you're going to pay. See, if I just write it up and send it to the DA, I don't get the satisfaction of bragging about how I got mud and blood on me and how I beat up a 73-year-old woman and I don't get to face, fist bump in the station because of how cool we are. Dislocated her shoulder, fractured her arm, kept her in a jail cell away from family, medical care, um, everything that a vulnerable at-risk person in the community like her needed then. Um, they kept her from it for over six hours. Now, Shelke says the family needs to see accountability. Six hours for shoplifting that she willing to pay and she walked away and that they broke her arm for. Do you see how pesky taxpayers pay the bill every time government gets involved? It costs you more money. When you idiots want more government and more power and more control for the government, it always costs you more money not to have, not only to have more, to pay more and more benefits. You hire incompetence to PC to make people feel good that shouldn't have a job. You do shit like that. That costs more. And then they're incompetent. So it takes more incompetency to do a job halfway incompetent than it would if you hired competent people. But we, we don't want to talk about that. And now you spend all this freaking time on an incident that would have cost Walmart. It would have been cheaper. For the freaking government to cut Walmart a $25 check and move on. Everybody would have been happier. You know what? Now we got medical bills. We got cops being relieved of duty, getting paid. We got cops being sued. We got attorneys making money. We got lawsuits. We got lawyers. We got court dates. Look how much money was spent over less than $25. The government could have just paid Walmart $25. Unfreaking believable. The behavior is indefensible. They knew they were being recorded, and yet they did it. Well, of course they do. They don't give a shit. Why should they? They're not held accountable. Anyway, we have to ask ourselves, why? Hey. We reached out to Loveland Police, and they tell us it's policy. Shoplifting investigation, the intense video of the arrest has gone viral online. Those cops ought to be f it does make it a little easier to understand how such a fragile two officers here in Loveland. I'm going home. What started as an investigation into led to this. Officer Hop grabbed her and threw her to the ground. 73-year-old Karen Garner, just 80 pounds, was arrested after failing.
Yeah, th yeah this, this, th this doesn't look good for the cops. I'm sure I'll have some blue line guys here coming here. Man, why are you picking the cops? This is a tough job. We're all heroes. This is hard. Yeah, this is really hard. Wow, man. This guy went home, told his wife, High five, baby. Shit, I beat up a 73-year-old woman. I am a man. Look at my badge. Here, go polish this for me, woman. Make me a sandwich. Out freaking rages. Okay, so here's the video that's got people most upset is the way these guys are acting. This doesn't really bother me as much as it does everybody else because after an arrest, when you're in their bullshit in a locker room environment, you're kind of talking shit and talking smack and decompressing. I mean, if you're dealing with real bad guys, these guys just beat up a 73-year-old woman. So that kind of like, if these guys are doing this after a 73-year-old woman gets beat up and dislocated, I mean... It just shows me these, I mean, the, the highlight of these guys' day is catching, a, you know, somebody rolling through a stop sign and they get to go out there and chew them out and tell them how tough they are. It's just freaking sickening. Do you think she's born 46? Mm -hmm. She's ancient. She told us. She's 73. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little worried that it's like, you know, stuff. Oh, we got a problem here. Uh, yeah, I'm... I'm a little worried that she's like senile and stuff. See, during the investigation, when they call him in to interview him, why did he say that and why did he think that? When did he think that? When did he form that opinion? And what made him form that opinion? All those things are critical to his state of mind when he used the force he did. So, I'm a little worried that it's like senile and stuff. I'm not sure if this is the guy that used the force. I think the guy that used the force is in a in a blue uniform or dark blue. Stupid question, but I gotta ask you, Rita Miranda. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I think this is the guy that beat her up because he's kind of Mr. Cocky and thinks he's cool. Uh, the guy that was typing before said, "I gotta ask you, Rita Miranda." It sounds like he was doing some sort of use of force report. So here's the two. Here's where the little girl gets her little rice paper feelings and she needs to be reassured that she's valued and worthy and all this other crap that they run around screaming with their hair on fire. And now he's going to really apologize to her. Neither one of them give a shit that a 78-year-old woman is in here with a broken arm and a dislocated arm and has dementia and can't even communicate with them over a freaking $25 shoplifting. Are you kidding me? So he wants to make sure her camera's off. She checks. Now they fist bump. See, consciousness of guilt. They know what they were doing was inappropriate. He knew it was inappropriate and he knew he didn't want people to see it. That's why he knew it was inappropriate. So he asked her, was her camera off before he completes the act? That goes to state of mind. I thought it went great. Yeah, we got to beat up a 73-year-old woman. How much better could that be? Shit. Maybe tomorrow we can get an 80-year-old woman. Freaking pussies. Don't agree. You do? Did you know? Apparently you didn't. Apparently you didn't. See, she's got her feelings hurt. She's staring at him because she's mad. Because she wants to tell him that she didn't feel valued. No, I did. I thought we were freaking a good question. But every time I try to jump in, like, I got pushed off. Okay, so if a male cop said that to me, you know what he'd get? Look, motherfucker, if you feel like you got pushed off, then get in there and take care of the business. My job isn't to make you feel good or to let you in or to somehow complete your freaking pussy-ass task to make you feel like you were in there. Either you freaking do the job or don't. Don't come here crying to me about freaking, I felt like I got pushed off. You know what? You felt that way probably because you did because you weren't freaking doing your job and you're a freaking pussy. And that proves it because you come here crying to me. So that's what I would say if a male officer said that to me. Watch what this guy says to her. I don't want you to think that I'm not acting. Because I felt like I wasn't acting because I didn't know what to do. And I wasn't getting in there. And you big strong men were in the middle and I wanted to get some in there too so I could prove myself. Like when I bragged to the sergeant on how I got mud and blood and that's the way it goes and I'm cool now. Yeah, uh, th again, they want to show up so they can get the medals and say they were there and say they got into it. And 
you know, it's just, it's, if you work with these female cops all the time, you would understand the frustration that we deal with every day trying to make them feel worthy and wanted and we don't want to hurt their feelings and we don't want them to run in and cry that they're complaining and it's just, it's just too much work. I'm very sorry I did that. It wasn't intentional. Oh, make her feel good. You were definitely fighting. Again, we have to reassure her. You were definitely fighting. So again, we're making her feel good that she was involved and that we both, as a team, beat up the 73-year-old woman. You're a lot tougher than she is. You're a lot tougher than she is. Really? Wow. Is that a compliment? I'm not sure if that's a compliment. If somebody told me I was a lot tougher than a 73-year-old woman that weighed 80 pounds, I'm not real sure I'd take that as a compliment. I think she took it as a compliment, and I think he meant it as a compliment. But whatever. They're still whispering consciousness of guilt. So did you hear the pop? He knows he probably hurt her. He hasn't checked her on whether or not she needs medical attention. They left her in there for six hours, no medical attention. They haven't done evaluation and said, hey, I think I might. I mean, look, people get hurt when you arrest them. But if you arrest them and they get hurt, then you deal with it. Hey, I might have hurt her. I think I heard something pop. Let's call a medic. Let me go talk to her. I want to check. I heard something pop. I want to make sure she's all right. Just because I arrested her doesn't mean that I hate her and I want her in pain and I want her to be miserable. See, that's the way uh, em empathetic cop thinks. Uh, or, or That's how somebody who gives a shit, that's how somebody who isn't a freaking psychopath like we have cops today that are so ate up with their power and their unaccountability and they're constantly being told they're heroes and how great they are when in fact they act like freaking pieces of shit. Okay, you gonna play? I'm pushing and pushing and pushing. I hear a pop. See that this this whole this whole thing between these two here is an ego kind of. I gotta make each other feel good. The fist bump that doesn't really bother me that much. I mean, anytime cops, you know, get somebody in cuss they have to fight with, and neither one of them got hurt, it was a good deal, you know. But again, that's when you're fighting with somebody who can do damage. You get a gun, a knife, or something. You get in a pursuit and you catch the guy. Peep, cops fist bump and do shit. These guys are doing this over a 73 year old, 80 pound woman for shoplifting under $25. Are you freaking kidding me? Oh, did I mention she was white? Okay. I want to make sure because the media is always impressed by when you say color of what people are. Yeah. I can't believe. He can't believe it. He's actually proud of it. He's sitting here bragging and laughing about how he did it. He told her you want to play. He's not freaking, he can't believe it. That dude was yelling at me. I guarantee you what he's saying is he wanted to go arrest him. I wanted to go punch him. That's the dude that stopped and said, hey, I saw you guys throwing this woman around. See again, she's got to she's got to prove I was still fighting. It's all about, and it's that happens so much with insecure people is they're always trying to s prove how tough they are and how worthy they are, and it's really just freaking pandemic with women in the police force. And I know there's going to be women here crying. <laughs> it's because women aren't given a fair chance and they're just as good as a man. No, it's not. It's because they get hired because they're a woman and they can't do the job and they're not as strong and they usually get in the way and they can't. And it's the same way with the fire department. They get hired. They can't drag a hose. They can't lift a heavy box. They can't do anything. The male firemen are always having to take care of the female firemen. They always complain about it to the cops. Cops are always complaining about the female officers. Firemen complain about female officers when the male officers show up saying, dude, man, 
She was worthless before you got here. I'm glad you showed up. She wasn't doing shit. So there's all these complaints that everybody knows is true, but nobody can say. No. We closed the door and you were still there. I was like, what's up? Like, we didn't close the door. I closed my door. We had her in the car. You closed your door, but she still wasn't in on my side. Oh, I told her. Sorry to Oh, I'm sorry I abandoned you. Again, I have to make her feel good. I don't want to upset her. She'll go in there and complain and say, you know, I wasn't being sensitive of her feelings. And the next thing you know, we'll need more training and sensitivity on how to how to make women cops feel better. That's okay. That's why I called for another unit. I was like, um, hello. Call for another unit. Two cops are fighting a 73-year-old woman and they call for another unit. Because one of the cops is really worried about her ponytail and her painting her nails. Both these cops are relieved of duty right now, getting paid while the investigation goes on. Is that the routine of Because you didn't, your boss say we'll talk later. No. Okay, more conscious of guilt. Did you hear the boss say we'll talk later? So she's more perceptive than him because she heard it. It sounds like he didn't hear it. But he said we'll talk later. Who thinks they know why he said we'll talk later? Raise your hand. If your hand's up and you think he said, we'll talk later because he knew the body camera was on and he wanted to get their story straight, then you're right. If you had any other reason to think that's why he said it, then I think you're full of shit. And again, this is my opinion. I could be wrong. I could be full of shit. But I'm telling you, he said, we'll talk later because the body cameras were on and he didn't want to talk about it on camera, just like this. I thought he heard that. So he said, let me know when you're ready for the app later. On scene. Blue team is, I guess, their investigation for use of force. I use force. Can I use your hosel? Because I don't have one. So watch this guy get excited because this is the first time he used a hobble. He hobbled a step. Now, I got to admit, I did see one footage where they put her in a figure four, which was a pretty good move. Uh, but they're, they're happy they got to use their hobble on a 73-year-old, 80-pound woman with dementia that they may or may not have known. Their statements kind of indicate they do think she was a little crazy. <laughs> So see, here's what I said. This guy's big day is to go out and write tickets all day. And he's excited now because he got to use a hobble on somebody for less than $25 shoplifting. And he got to throw her on the ground. And he got his partner get to say that I got muddy and bloody and that's the way it goes. And we're tough. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> I'm super excited. <laughs> what, what happened when you got off the stage? And you're like, short start was in the day. It would pop a little bit. But it's just a little, like, when I say, hey, I'm fighting, have everyone say, you want to go to the brain Yeah. I was like, I'm fine, I can handle it. I mean, dog. So, <laughs> I was like, all right, let's wrestle, girl. Let's wreck it. Okay, let's wrestle, girl. Let's wreck it. He's all excited because of 80 or 73 year old woman. I was, when I was looking for this video, I found where they arrested an 86 year old woman and tased her. Uh, when I was looking for the cop, arrest 73 year old woman. And I did a video on that one. That was the 86-year-old woman with dementia that was picking flowers. And they end up tasing her because she was using a, either a knife or a spade to pick the flowers. And she was armed, so they tased her. I did, that, that's probably on a playlist somewhere. <laughs> right on the ground, all that stuff. Got her cuffed up. That was me. And then I had her in the patrol car she showed up. So I was getting her in my patrol car because I did everything, and then she showed up. So she, she showed up just to help get her in a patrol car and couldn't even do that. But the cop went here on her, on her hand. I'm like, oh. oh. So just the way this guy's talking about these guys are all kind of laughing. This is a very kind of podunk. This is small town. This is, this is the shit I would expect kind of like on an Air Force base when I went in. There's, on some Air Force bases, there's hardly no crime. Some, there's actually quite a bit. You'd be surprised. But on some, there's like no crime. And so your big night is to arrest somebody who resists on a drunk driving and you have to call for additional units or something. So 
I mean, this is kind of, but you're, you're dealing with a lot of young kids, you know, 18, 19 year old kids that are in the military. And so them talking like that, but to see cops out here talking like this just really is, it's just sad, the mentality of our law enforcement today. She's spit on you, Paul. Nothing like that. Did she spit on you? See, because he was asking earlier when he was typing, and maybe he he's not maybe he's not connected. I don't know why he has a different color shirt on. Uh, but he said, "I have to ask, did you read her rights?" So the fact that he said, "I have to ask," tells me he was probably doing something on here. But now he's saying, "Did she spit on you?" Nothing like that. So he's trying to figure out why did you use so much force and take her to the ground. I think that's what's in the back of his mind, but I'm not sure. No, he didn't want to come with us. I used the force without uh, light control holes. So. so you use force instead of light control holes. See, he's doing a sly investigation or he's coaching them how to give their statement when they give their statement. One of the two is happening. <laughs> so here's with a little girl who's her, got her feelings hurt because they pushed her side. Nobody cares about the 73-year-old woman. And they're going to laugh and joke, and it's like live TV. This is what offensive... Now, look, I think if everybody was on body cam or was videotaped all day, we would see a lot more of this in every profession. I do not think this is isolated to cops. I think it shows up more in cops, but I think it's in all government, and there's always going to be this behind the scenes that people never know about. The fact that she says, I hate watching body cams, even when I come on to do these videos. And the fact that she says she could watch them all day long. I mean, again, it goes back to, they must not do much here, but write tickets. Ready for the pop. So he knows exactly when it happened. This is going to hurt him on if you heard a pop and you knew, he can't say I didn't know. He's already admitted. So during the investigation, it's going to be like, when you heard a pop, why didn't you ask her if she was injured and why didn't you call medical? Well, uh, I, I wasn't sure. Well, right here, you seem to have knowledge and you even know exactly where it's going to happen in the video. <laughs> I love it because he gets to, I mean, he actually feels good. Even, I mean, the fact that he did it, maybe in a spur of the moment, I might be able to cut him some slack. But the fact that he likes watching it in replay and not seeing what a pussy he was, I mean, it just goes to show what kind of mindset we're dealing with. She's complaining that they're really hurting her. Well, I think there means that her arm and shoulder is probably hurting her. And so why don't they call in? So why don't they call in um, medical aid? Why don't they take some action because she's complaining of pain? I'm pretty sure they probably have a policy. When an in-custody complains of pain, you'll contact medical or see if medical is required or notify a supervisor. I'm pretty sure they violated policy right here by she complained of pain and they ain't doing shit. But again, we don't know. Maybe they did do something. Again, I can't find the exact footage. In this video, this law professor kind of explains pretty good how the cops show a lack of compassion. I just call it a mentality of a, a gang bully with badge and power with no accountability. She calls it a lack of compassion. Most police officers aren't equipped to handle it. Here is Denver 7's Lance Hernandez. I'm not home. No, you're not. I think what, what is... So he's laughing 
has he thrown her around in handcuffs with her arms. I mean, her arms aren't down here. Her arms are still way up in the middle of her shoulder blades. I mean, this is, this is a pretty high control position disturbing in the video is you see the officer kind of immediately treat her like enemy number one. CU Law Professor Agreed. Maya Gruber says this video shows an utter lack of compassion and human feeling. She thinks police overreacted and used too much force on an 80 pound woman with dementia. But national use of force expert Ed Obayashi says the officers acted the way they were trained. Oh my God. Yeah, this is the guy that comes out and says, oh, yeah, they use minimum force, blah, blah, blah. I mean, he's he's full of shit in my book. But Dr. Geiber, she pulled away. He says there was no indication Karen Garner suffered from mental illness. I asked if officers need. See, he says there's no indication. Again, the body cam footage of what information they either got from dispatch from Walmart employees or did they contact Walmart employees? Because Walmart employees may have, when they called 911 or called the police, it was recorded. They may have said, look, we think the woman doesn't know where she's at. She kept saying she wants to go home. She seems like she's out of it. We didn't want to use. Walmart employees use more reason than the so-called trained cops because they let her walk away because they didn't want to use force on her. But that's not going to stop a police officer. They're heroes. No pesky citizen will get away with this conduct. They will use force. Need more training on how to deal with people experiencing dementia. Oh, my God. More training. Let me see what happened here. Uh. Of the suspect, the unarmed suspect. And then, you know, when you put on top of it kind of this very dis dismissive and demeaning attitude. Garner apparently suffered a broken arm, dislocated shoulder, and sprained wrist. Does that indicate that there was excessive force use? And otherwise. Okay, that guy's full shit. Just because there's injuries does not mean it's excessive. Okay, people get hurt when cops use force, but it still may be minimum force, it may be legitimate force, okay? I can handcuff a guy, put him in a car, he has no damage, and he can thrash around back there and try to get out of the cuffs and tear his hands up, bruise his wrist, bang his shoulder in the wall, fall off the back seat onto the floorboard. That does not mean I used excessive force. So that comment was incorrect. It's reasonable use of force. Can't. Yashi says the angle of limbs, frailty, and pre-existing conditions come into play. Comes into play with her. Regardless of the outcome of situations like this, there is no question police are under a microscope like never before. They should be. Lance Hernandez, Denver 7. And this arrest is also raising questions about whether it's worth it to call police over a low dollar shoplifting crime. According to the New York Times, Walmart changed its policy 15 years ago and does not prosecute any first time shoplifters taking less than $25 worth of stuff. Now, we reached out to the company to find out why police were called in this case. No response yet. All right, look, uh, I I'm not a fan of how the cops handle this. And I think this goes into earning hate. Uh, these cops are probably, I don't know if they're going to fire these cops. They'll probably write them up. I'm not even, uh, you know what? I, again, I don't have enough information. I want to see the complete uncut body cam footage to see what level of resistance, what they knew when they were acting, et cetera, in order to make a better opinion. So anyway, that's my thoughts on this. I'm getting a lot of, a lot of people saying. Also, uh, for those that are still here, if you can unsubscribe and resubscribe, uh, and then hit the bell. Uh, evidently, YouTube changed their uh, their uh, somehow subscribe policy. And if you've been subscribed for a long time and you're not getting notifications, it's because they changed it and won't update until you unsubscribe and resubscribe and then hit the bell. So if you want to do that, fine. If not, that's okay too. All right. We'll see y'all later. We'll end that there.